today we shall discuss about physical quantities and measurement so our first topic of discussion is about the density of a substance now before di discussing what actually density is you might all know that each object or each body has a certain mass and it occupies certain volume if the mass of a body is increased its volume will obviously increase similarly the volume of a body is increased its mass will also increase but what we actually realize from our observations is that equal volumes of different substances might have different masses whereas equal masses of different substances might have different volumes equal volumes of different substances have different masses so if you consider equal volumes of two different substances say for example consider 100 cm cube or 100 m cube of cotton and 100 meter cube of iron now both the volumes of iron and cotton is 100 meter cube but definitely if you compare their masses iron will have comparatively large mass as compared to equal volume of cotton similarly equal masses of different substances have different volumes so if you consider 1 kg of iron and 1 kg of wood both the masses are 1 kg but from our observation it is definitely that the volume of 1 kg of cotton will be quite large as compared to the volume of 1 kg of iron so this is what we realize on the basis of this realization what we know is that whether the volumes are equal or the masses are equal we can compare the density of different substances so in order to explain the fact that equal volumes of different substances have different masses or equal masses of different substances have different volumes we use a physical quantity or we use a term what is called as density and the density of any substance is simply the mass per unit volume of the given substance so density of a substance density of a substance is its mass per unit volume mass per unit volume so if you denote the density by d and the mass of the substance by m and the volume of the substance by capital v then what we write is d equal to m by v in some books instead of using the letter d we use the symbol rho to denote density as mass by volume now this is a greek letter which is pronounced as rho you read it as rho so this also is denoted by density now if you consider the unit of density then obviously it is the unit of mass divided by the unit of volume in different types of units if you consider si unit if you consider si unit then definitely the unit of density will be kg per meter cube because kg is the si unit of mass and meter cube is the si unit of volume so the si unit of density will be kg per meter cube and if you use cgs units for mass the cgs unit is gram and for volume the cgs unit is centimeter cube so the cgs unit of density 
will be definitely gram per centimeter cube. And definitely you can correlate gram per centimeter cube with kg per meter cube. A very simple calculation will establish the relationship between both of these. Now, 1 kg per meter cube is definitely 1 kg by 1 meter cube. 1 kg means 1000 gram and 1 meter cube. 1 meter is 100 centimeter. So this is 100 centimeter into 100 centimeter into 100 centimeter. That is 10 to the power 6 centimeter cube. So this is 100 gram by 10 to the power 6 centimeter cube. Sorry, 1000 gram by 10 to the power 6. 1000 obviously means 10 to the power 3. So this is 10 to the power 3 by 10 to the power 6. That is 10 to the power minus 3 gram per centimeter cube. So finally what we can say is that 1 kg per meter cube if you want to convert to the corresponding CGS unit you will get 1 kg per meter cube as 10 to the power minus 3 gram per centimeter cube. That means 1 upon 1000 gram per centimeter cube. Or you can say if you want to convert from CGS to side, you just write 1 gram per centimeter cube is 1000 kg per meter cube or 10 to the power 3 kg per meter cube. So you can easily convert between the two systems of unit. Now, we know that the density of substance depends upon several factors like temperature etc. But the density of a substance is totally independent of the shape and the size of the substance. Density is independent of shape and size of the given substance or the shape and size of the given body of whose density we are trying to measure. Most of the substance, if we heat them, definitely they will expand. So on heating a substance, it expands means its volume will increase and if its volume increases, then definitely the density will decrease because mass remains constant for most of the substance. On the substance, on heating, the volume will expand, and because density is mass by volume, as the mass remains constant, the density will decrease. Decrease. Volume increases, and so density decreases because mass is constant. On the other hand, you can say that if a substance is cooled then it will contract and on contraction its density will increase and you can say vice versa. So there is almost an inversely proportional relationship you can say for temperature as well as density. So on heating density decreases and on cooling density increases. This is for most of the substances but the exception is water because the density of water is maximum at 4 degrees centigrade and that is also called as anomalous expansion of water. We can show the variation of density with temperature through a graph. So almost this type of graph you will get. Variation of density with temperature. So at around 4 degree centigrade the density is maximum and the density if you measure in CTS unit that maximum value of the density is 1 gram per centimeter cube or you can say it is 1000 kg per meter cube for water. So at 4 degree centigrade the density is maximum and now if it is cooled 
if the temperature falls from 4 degree centigrade to 0 degree centigrade, definitely the density decreases. The density decreases means there is a <coughs> density decreases means it is mass by volume, density decreases means volume increases. So in the temperature range forced to 0 degree centigrade, what are showing an expansion and above 4 degree centigrade, say for example if it is heated to 10 degree centigrade, the density will again decrease. So unlike most of the substances, it is water which contracts on heating from 0 to 4 degree centigrade. Water contracts on heating from 0 degree to 4 degree centigrade. So from 0 to 4 it is contracting. Because it is contracting, if its temperature is increased from 0 to 4, its density will increase. And also water expands on heating above 4 degree centigrade. Water contracts on heating from 0 degree centigrade to 4 degree centigrade. Above 4 degree centigrade it contracts. Above 4 degree centigrade, if water is heated, it contracts. Sorry, it expands. It expands. And so its density decreases. Because from 4 degree centigrade to say about 10 degree centigrade, we are trying to heat water, then its volume will increase. It will expand. And so its density will decrease. Now, this behavior is also called as anomalous expansion of water. And unlike water, most of the substances will behave in the normal way. That is, on heating the density will decrease and on cooling the density will increase. Now we have to measure the density of different types of solids. Whether the solid is a regular solid or the solid is an irregular solid. So determination of density of a regular solid which means that those solids which have a regular geometrical structure, <coughs> structure a regular geometrical shape say for example a cube or a cuboid or a cone or a cylinder these are regular solids they have a definite geometrical shape their volume can be easily calculated so in order to measure the density first step is to measure the mass of the substance, suppose the mass is m and the mass can be measured by a beam balance. So using a beam balance we can measure the mass of the solid and then by using standard formulas we can measure the volumes of the regular solids. Say for example volume of a cube is obviously its length into because all the sides of a cube are same so the volume of a cube is equal to any side cube any one side and we multiply that side by itself three times to get the volume of the cube similarly the volume of a cuboid is length into breadth into height the volume of a cylinder is obviously pi r square h where r is the radius and height h is the height of the cylinder. Similarly, volume of a cone is one third pi r square h where r is the radius and h is the height of the cone. Volume of a sphere is 4 by 3 pi r cube where r is the radius and pi is either 22 by 7 or 3.14. So these are some examples of regular solids. In order to measure the volume, you have just you have to just measure the length or the radius of the height, and that can be done using a meter rule. A meter ruler or a simple scale can be used to measure the length, the breadth, and the radius of such regular solids or solids having regular geometric shape. And we can always measure the mass using a beam balance. Having known both the mass and the volume, the density can be easily calculated as the ratio of mass to volume.
Now, there are certain vessels which are available in the laboratory in order to measure the volume and those vessels for measuring the volume of any liquid for example is either a measuring cylinder or a measuring beaker or an eureka can. So in order to measure the volume of liquids For measuring volume of liquids, mass is always measured using beam balance, but for measuring volumes, we have different types of vessels. So, there are three commonly used vessels is a measuring cylinder or a measuring beaker. Eureka can. So, in case of a measuring cylinder, it is just a cylinder made up of glass, and the volume is either marked in millimeters or centimeter cube. Most of the cylinders available in the laboratory have their markings in milliliter. Now, these markings are also called as calibrations or graduations. Suppose this is a simple measuring cylinder, there are markings which are available in milliliters specifically and so on. These markings are also called as graduations or calibration. It is generally marked in milliliter and remember that one milliliter is one centimeter cube if we need to convert to the CGS system and from centimeter cube we can always convert to meter cube if required. And measuring beaker is of different shapes available in the shape of uh, thunder or in the shape of some these are some popular shapes of measuring beakers. And Eureka can is a totally different type of measuring cylinder in which it has an opening at its side and that opening is called as a spout. So if excess liquid is poured into that Eureka can, the excess liquid will come out of the spout. So the shape of that Eureka can is something like this. It has a narrow opening. This opening is called as a spout. So if excess liquid is poured, that excess liquid will come out of the spout. And that excess liquid can be taken into a cylinder and the actual volume of the excess liquid can also be measured. So these are three popular vessels available for measuring the volume of a liquid. Now, while measuring the density of a irregular solid, we cannot use those predefined formulas. We have to do something else. We actually dip that irregular solid into a liquid and by the increase in the volume of the liquid, we try to measure the volume of the irregular solid. Suppose we try to measure the density of an irregular solid. First of all, we have to measure the mass, and that can be easily done using a beam balance because irregular solids do not have a regular geometrical shape, and we cannot use any predefined formula for calculating the volume. So, first of all, what we do is we measure the mass. The mass, suppose. M of the irregular solid is measured using a beam balance. This is done for a regular solid also. And then, in order to measure the volume V, the process that we use is we dip that particular solid 
in a liquid and by the displacement of the liquid we measure the volume of the solid. This method is also called as displacement method. In order to measure the volume we use a method which is popularly called as the displacement method and that is if a, if a liquid, oh sorry, if a solid is immersed in liquid, if a solid is immersed in liquid, it displaces some liquid obviously and the volume of the liquid displaced is equal to the volume of the solid itself. If the solid is immersed in a liquid, it displaces the volume of volume equal to that of the solid. So this method is called as displacement method. So what we do is we take a measuring cylinder and we fill that measuring cylinder with water or any liquid you can take. Suppose we take a measuring cylinder and suppose we fill the measuring cylinder up to a certain level using water and we note the volume. We note the volume. Suppose the volume of the liquid, sorry, any liquid you can take but we are taking water. Suppose the volume of the liquid that we have kept in the measuring cylinder is V1. From the level of the liquid we can measure the volume because we have already known that the measuring cylinder is marked in milliliter centimeter cube. Let me assume that this is in milliliter. And then we carefully dip or insert the irregular solid using a thread. Suppose this is the irregular solid. And then what happens is that the volume of liquid will rise. Suppose the volume rises and this is again observed to be a volume V2 in milliliter and by subtracting these two volumes we get the volume of the solid. So the volume V of the solid will obviously become V2 minus V1 in milliliter suppose. And then as we have calculated the volume we can now easily calculate the density of the solid. So the density of the solid is obviously m by v which is obviously the mass as measured by the beam balance and the volume v as measured by the displacement method using measuring cylinder is v2 minus v1. So this is a very easy way of finding the volume of the irregular solid. Instead of using measuring cylinder we could have taken a Eureka can also. Now using Eureka can the excess liquid that will come out of the spout we use a measuring cylinder to measure that excess liquid and that excess liquid will be equal to the volume of the solid. That means that initially we take some liquid in a Eureka can the excess liquid is taken out into a measuring cylinder the liquid is discarded and then we insert this irregular solid using a thread into that Eureka can the excess liquid now that comes out of the spout is taken in a measuring cylinder and measured. That excess liquid is obviously the liquid displaced by the solid which is equal to the volume of the solid and by measuring that excess liquid we can easily calculate the volume of the solid. So these are the basic principles of measuring the density of irregular solid. We can also measure the density of liquid but we use a different type of measuring device which is called as a density bottle or the specific gravity bottle for measuring the density of a liquid. In a similar manner we can determine the density of a liquid. So so in order to measure the mass we definitely use a beam balance, a common beam balance and in order to measure the volume we use a measuring cylinder or a Eureka con or whatever or a beaker. So the mass is measured using a beam balance and the 
volume V of the substance of the liquid is measured using a measuring cylinder or whichever measuring machine is convenient that we can use. So suppose we want to measure <coughs> the density of a known liquid, say for example milk or water or whatever liquid is available to us or oil. We can do by a very easy method. The first procedure is we have to take a beaker and we have to measure the mass of the empty beaker. Suppose we measure the mass of an empty beaker using a beam balance and let that mass of the empty beaker be denoted as capital M1. Suppose the mass we have measured in gram and it is suppose M1 grams. Then we take a measuring cylinder and pour some liquid. The liquid can be oil, the liquid can be milk or any liquid. We pour the liquid in a measuring cylinder up to a certain level and let the volume as indicated by the measuring cylinder be V. Volume measure using measuring cylinder. And suppose that measuring cylinder measures the volume as V in milliliter say. Now we pour the liquid that we have measured using the measuring cylinder into the empty beaker and then again measure the mass of that empty beaker with the liquid inside it using the beam balance. So now what we do is mass of beaker with the liquid. So mass of beaker plus liquid again it is measured using the beam balance and suppose that we obtain as M2 gram. Now this obviously means that the mass of the liquid is M2 minus M1. Mass of beaker plus liquid minus mass of empty beaker will give you the mass of the liquid. So mass of liquid, suppose it is M, which is obviously M2 minus M1. Suppose that is in gram. So now obviously you can say that the density is mass by volume, which is M2 minus M1 divided by V. So this is a very easy method of finding the density of known liquid like milk or oil or even water. The density of a liquid can also be measured using the density bottle or the specific gravity bottle. So it is a special type of <coughs> measuring vessel you can say that we use in the laboratory. So that is called as the density bottle. The density bottle is generally made up of glass and it has a stopper at its neck. The stopper, <coughs> the stopper has a small hole through which the excess liquid comes out. So that the density bottle always contains the volume of the entire liquid kept in it. So density bottle was previously called a specific gravity bottle but nowadays this name is not used anymore. So specific gravity bottle it was called previously nowadays we call it as density bottle so it is a specifically or a specially designed bottle you can say which is used to measure the density of the liquid it is used to measure the density of a liquid and it is usually made up of glass. Definitely it is made up of glass and it has a specific volume of liquid containing it. The volume is either uh, 25 milliliter. That means you can say the capacity of the density bottle is 25 milliliter or 50 milliliter. Commercially available 
density bottles are either 25 or 50 milliliter. So it has a stopper at its neck. So this is a glass stopper and it has a small hole so that the excess liquid comes out of the hole and the amount of liquid it holds is either 25 milliliter or 50 milliliter maximum. So, the, and the feature of this bottle is that it always contains the same volume of liquid each time it is filled. You can use this density bottle to measure the density of a liquid. What we do is, we first take an empty density bottle, we clean it and then clean it using water, then dry it and measure its mass using a beam balance. So these are the steps that we can apply in order to measure the density of a liquid using a density bottle. So first of all, we take a dry bottle, we wash the density bottle properly with water, thoroughly rinse with water and wash it, and then dry it, and then measure the mass of the empty bottle using a beam balance, and suppose the mass as measured is M1 gram. This is the mass of empty density bottle. Then we remove the stopper of the bottle and fill it with water. We replace the stopper and measure its mass again. And suppose now the mass is M2 gram. M2 gram. So this is mass of density bottle with liquid, say for example water contained in it. You can take any type of liquid. So mass of density bottle with the liquid inside it is M2 gram as measured by a beam balance. Now we again empty the bottle, again dry it and fill the bottle with another liquid. Let me clarify. In the first situation we properly clean the density bottle, dry it and then mass <coughs> then measure its mass. That is measure we are measuring the mass of the empty density bottle using a beam balance and that is M1 gram. Now we pour water inside it and then measure the mass of, we completely fill it with water and then we again measure the mass of the density bottle with water in it using a beam balance and that mass is suppose M2 gram. Now we again empty the bottle, we dry it, now fill the bottle with another liquid, unknown liquid say for example oil or milk or whatever it is. Then replace the stopper and again measure the mass and suppose that mass is M3 gram. The mass is again measured using a beam balance. So this is the mass of density bottle plus the liquid whose density we are trying to measure. That is M3 gram. Now we can calculate the mass of water that we have taken. Obviously M2 minus M1 is the mass of water. So suppose mass of water is M2 minus M1 and the mass of the liquid is definitely M3 minus M1. Density bottle plus liquid minus mass of the empty density bottle will give you the mass of the liquid. So mass of liquid is M3 minus M1. Now the mass is measured in gram and the Volume is measured in centimeter cube. So mass of the liquid is M3 minus M1, obviously in gram suppose, and this is also in gram suppose, and the volume is measured in centimeter cube or milliliter. Now remember that density of water in CGS unit 
is 1 gram per centimeter cube. We are typically using CGS unit and you must remember that density of water is 1 gram per centimeter cube. So density of liquid will be the ratio of these masses because the density of water is 1 gram per centimeter cube. So mass of water contained in the bottle is actually the volume of the bottle because we know that density is mass by volume so if you multiply volume with density you will get mass because the density of water is 1 gram per centimeter cube it means that the volume of water inside the density bottle is its mass the mass of water contained in the bottle is actually the volume of the bottle now density of liquid is definitely mass of the liquid by volume of the liquid which is obviously equal to m3 minus m1 that we have already measured mass of the liquid m3 minus m1 and the volume of the liquid is the volume of the density water itself and that is also equal to the amount of water in the density water and that is m2 minus m1 Remembering that the density of water is 1 gram per centimeter cube. So this will be the density of the liquid in gram per centimeter cube. 